But we must begin to understand that in a concept of forming inside our community a united front, a black united front, which engulfs every sector, every facet, and every person inside our community working for the benefit of black Thank you. Good evening, everyone. You know, I just wanted to congratulate Betty all of you, you're doing a wonderful job. This is exactly what we need. But this gentleman basically said everything that I was going to say. That is, there's a twofold question here, and I grew up in Newark, and I hate to say I remember some of that struggle because I was there. But it's a twofold question. How do we continue black politics? How do we keep going? But the other part of the question is, how do we develop economic growth in our community? See, when they started the struggle, the idea was the more black people you got in political power, then all of a sudden, there was going to be jobs, there was going to be creativity, we weren't going to have any of this nonsense going on. We have a great black president, but we still don't have jobs for people in the streets. It's more than just electing black people to office. That is a part of it. But the other part is we have to teach ourselves how to develop economic independence. We have to teach our young people how to develop their skills so that they can create their jobs. You have to remember an elected official can open the doors but we've got to be able to walk through. Right. Government jobs are over. Go ahead. It's over. That's right. And it's not going to be the way it was 20 years ago. That's right. It's not going to happen. Right. But we have to take this now and start saying, what can we do in our community? Right. What can we do to develop our own selves and our own independence? If you go down in a part of Jersey City, uh, down in the Indian section, the Pakistani section, they have their own jobs. They create their own jobs in their own community. They have their own stores. They have their own businesses. Anything you want, they have created in that part of town for them. It is for them, it is worked by them and created by them. What are we creating out here? What are we creating? So I think the question is twofold. We need both. We need President Obama in the White House, but we got to be doing some other things out here in the street. Right. We have. So I just wanted to say that this is a wonderful start, and Betty's right. We start small and build. You have to start somewhere. Right. Kalima's right. We have to take young people like Kalima, encourage her. We want to pass the torch, but we want you to be educated and strong. Right. Just because you say pass the torch and you're not ready, that's no good either. You're ready. Right. And we want to help you and encourage you to do what you're doing. But while we're helping Kalima, while we're keeping Obama in the White House, while we're moving other blacks into other positions, we've got to be dealing with the economics in our community. So if we do anything tonight, this is the beginning. And let's build on this. But let us not forget, President Obama is not going to be able to come down here and give every single person here a job. Because it just isn't going to happen. But we need to be making sure that our young people in our community understand the necessity of getting some sort of education and some training and start thinking out the box about how to create a job for themselves legally. And this gentleman here was talking about history, and Betty knows I'm a big proponent of history. Why don't we teach our kids our history so that they know that everything that they need to survive, to achieve, they already have. They already have. Our ancestors came over the Middle Passage. Nobody else can say that. 
We can do whatever it is we want to do. We have it within ourselves. Let's teach our kids their history and then teach us all how to use it. Thank you.